So is Erishim broken or balanced? Yes. One thing Erishim allows you to do is turn cards into broken versions of themselves. There are cards like White Widow, Vision, Green Goblin, and more that just are broken if you can play them earlier on the curve, which is exactly what Erishim allows you to do because he's giving you bonus energy every turn. But he is also balanced because he's adding an extra 12 cards into your deck. So that of course is going to decrease your deck's consistency and what it's able to do. So you really have to be good if you're going to pick him up with navigating the unknown. But should you pick up Erishim? I have four questions being displayed now. I'd say if you answer at least two out of the four, you probably should pick him up. So I'll run through my answers right now. Do I like combo decks? Yes, of course, I love combo decks. That's a lot of what this channel is about. The reason why that's important is Erishim isn't necessarily a combo deck, but he exhibits a lot of those same problems. You're gonna have to retreat probably more often with this type of deck, but also your cube gains can be greater because the opponent just doesn't know what to expect. Do you like Loki decks? I personally do. I don't play them much, but I do. It's playing the unknown. It keeps the game fresh for me. So I do enjoy that aspect. Do I like ramp decks? I do like ramp decks. Again, I don't play them much, but I enjoy getting extra energy. Who doesn't? I hate district decks. I don't want peace. I want problems always. <laughs> as probably the majority of the player base hates District X, so that's a resounding no for me. The big difference between District X and Erishim is District X obliterates your entire deck. There is no shot of drawing any of the cards you brought into the game once District X flips. With Erishim, there is still that possibility and you have extra energy. So I think the District X comparison I understand it. I think it's a little off base. Just the fact that you're getting extra energy and you can still enact your original deck's game plan, given that you draw into it, it's different enough where that pure District X downside is mitigated. So I answered most of those questions with the yes. So I picked up Erishem. He's very fun. Right now, as I predicted before his release, the game is filled with Erishem decks. So this is going to be a different video where I just cover a couple of the decks. You're in all likelihood just going to see pure mirror matches. So this is going to be a very short video. I just wanted to get out a couple of decks that I thought we are positioned to perform once we get out of this pure Erishim meta that we're in right now. So the first deck we have is Junk. Like I said in the intro, my goal with Erishim is to make cards broken. Junk cards are definitely broken if you get them out ahead of curve. So the game plan is just like any other junk deck. You wanna clog your opponent, the opponent's lanes. The issue with junk decks is putting out enough power on the board. That said, you have random cards and you can kind of fill that out. If you're not drawing well, just retreat. Like I said, it runs more like a combo deck. So you're just gonna to have to be a little bit careful. And this deck does have tech in Shang-Chi and Enchantress. The biggest counter to Erishem decks are Darkhawk and the upcoming card, Cassandra Nova. So having tools to combat that are going to be important. You won't draw them much, right? Your deck is twice the size of another player's deck, but it's still important to have the right tools just in case you can get big cube gains by swinging those games at the last second when your opponent doesn't expect it. The other deck I'm messing around with is a lockdown version. Getting a turn two storm is fantastic. Getting a turn four Professor X is fantastic. And then even with an early Professor X, because you have extra energy beforehand, you can get a lot of power into a singular lane and then lock down that lane. We also have vision to cover that lane just in case you wanna YOLO a Professor X. And you can play down a vision later and move it. Or if you've already played down vision, you can, of course, move it after the fact into the Professor X lane. We have a couple of tech cards, one being Shang-Chi for our big targets on the other side of the board. The other being Echo. She is quite often an invisible card to the, an invisible card to the opponent, and they will play ongoings on top of her. 
She can also be used to control where they play their ongoings, or you can try to snipe it, snipe their ongoing if they have priority. Again, this is the fight back primarily against Darkhawk. There were some people interested in my Erisham thoughts and if I was going to pick him up. So that's all this video is here for. To get those out, get these couple of decks. They are not refined. There's still a work in progress. It's still very early. But this, these will be decks that I continue to try as we move out of everybody and their mother using Erisham decks. Okay, we have Brown Fawn 7. Not one. Not two. Not three. Not four. Not five. Not six. We have our junk cards in hand. We have Leech. Do I play Black Widow into Big House or Unknown? I think I will side with Big House. And then they played right. So I, that's where I'm going to throw my Green Goblin, actually. Well. Well. <laughs> oh, snap. snap. And this is where I'm going to throw Green Goblin. And then I probably will throw Debris Middle at least right now, and clog their outer lanes more so. Because of the Green Goblin difference, I'm fine throwing Debris into Jotunheim. But there's an argument to be made that I could play Debris left or right, because I'm still going to be ahead in Jotunheim. So let's see what this is. This is Muir Island. I will actually throw Debris right so we can further mess up their lanes. I have Hobgoblin that I drew into, which is fantastic. So we are drawing the cards we need to, which is why I snapped, or that are part of my deck, with the bonus energy. So a turn four Hobgoblin is just fantastic. So they are filled left. Loki, I have priority. I'm afraid of them blocking what I want to do middle. And the question is, can I even win left? So this gets me kind of there. Or they don't have a way to buff left, actually. I'm going to... Hmm, this might be a mistake. But my mind's telling me to just solidify left. Yeah, they... They did play... Did leave a slot open. Middle. But I'm afraid this is the Hobgob... Oh, wow. They just... Oh, wow. Thank you. And they just clogged middle. <laughs> this was a fantastic play. Yikes. They can't send me any goblins. That is fantastic. How are you doing, Mbaku? Uh, I mean, I guess we just play this out now. Yeah, and there they go. <laughs> so, so this was fantastic. Was this? Yes, this was a mirror match. They were the Loki version and Pixie for good measure. Our game plan worked perfectly. We clogged the lanes we needed to. And that is when you snap and you get to work junking them up. Okay, next up we have Rafa. Miniaturized lab. We have the high end of our curve. I would love some cheaper cards, and we are just not going to get them. Mm. Ravona, this is a regular deck. Crown City. I mean, I think I just play stats. Okay, we will not be playing a life in that lane. Do I play it on the Echo? Let's see. Well, because they would play... No, you can't play Wong into a Cosmo lane. What are they trying to protect? We're going to have to snipe their Darkhawk. So next turn, they are playing Darkhawk. I am snapping now. And I'm going to play Vision. We need priority. That's what this is predicated on. So let's see if they take... They took priority from it. Hey, you found they did not take priority from me. Okay, now we play the Echo. <laughs> and 
Nick Fury is six cost cards. I think I play the Yeah. I really want priority. Here's the Darkhawk. So do they play the Darkhawk under Cosmo? And this is why we have Echo in the deck. And this is going to be so beautiful when they play Darkhawk right. Here it is. Show me Darkhawk. <laughs> what did you do? That is exactly why we waited. Now Mystique is absolutely useless. Uh, I think I moved. Yeah. I actually don't need to play for middle because I'm winning with that four bonus. So I'm playing Eliath left. I know they want it to Mystique, which they can't do anymore. This is why Echo's in the deck to fight back against the Darkhawk decks. Dare I speak too soon, but we executed this perfectly. It was imperative that I maintain priority. Beautiful. Victory. They, they weren't ready for Echo. Nobody's ready for Echo. And we timed it. We, we snapped two turns in advance. I knew what I wanted to do on turn five, I think it was. I knew I wanted to play Echo with priority. So I snapped on turn four, I think I snapped, when I played Vision. So it was just maintaining priority. And then on turn five, now they snap before they do their surprise play. But they are completely unaware that I'm about to play Echo. It was very key that I figure out what deck they are. You are a Darkhawk deck. You play Cosmo. You do not want your Darkhawk Shawned or Enchantress. Echo bypasses all of that. So they were guaranteed to play Darkhawk right, which is what I said before they played it. We were very comfortable into them snapping back because we had Echo with priority. There's an argument to be made. The safer play for me is Eliath middle, just because I have more points middle. But I wanted to hedge against anything unexpected. So that is why ultimately I decided on Eliath left. I wanted to win all three lanes, which is exactly what we were doing with this play. I would have been up four to three middle because I'm winning Crown City. So this was just a win all three lanes, force them to either flip right with a 15 power card, good luck, or try some combo of cards, which is probably not going to overpower me in, in all three lanes. So I do have bonus clips coming up. It's probably going to be a bunch of me losing with this with these decks. <laughs> uh, it is super hard to evaluate a card against the situation that I'm facing, which is everybody is either playing Arishem or playing counters to Arishem. So anybody that claims to know how good Arishem is really going to be is probably full of it. Uh, it is super tough to evaluate a card under these conditions. That said, I think he's just going to be a solidly good card that ultimately can be competitive in the same way other combo decks are competitive, like Phoenix Force, like Hela. You can be competitive with, th with this deck, I believe, going forward. But again, it's a massive to be determined uh, based on once everybody settles back into not playing with the shiny new toy. This is the junk version once again. I'm not sure how refined this particular deck is. Again, I'm still in the very early phases and I need to get out of this Arishim meta to truly evaluate how effective this deck is. And then we have the lockdown version, which I think, again, is going to be pretty effective uh, once I can learn how to better pilot this deck and learn cards that I barely use, <laughs> which you will see in the bonus clips, me uh, snatching defeat from victory. So speaking of bonus clips, let's get into them. Oh boy. <laughs> there is my there is my uh, loss. Maybe I include this because it's short. Uh, the third location backfired on us. No problem. Get out of there for a cube. We we helped them have a good time. Nice. We we drew what we needed. And the the plus six. So even if they play a 
Blue Marvel. That's still not enough. So we get down Warlock, we get down Nico, and we just call it a day because of the strong. Oh no! Oh no! Oh! I made it. Fatal error. Fatal error. What I should have done is. I tell you what, we're Professor Xing this thing and saying that I can win the tiebreaker. Is this Sean? Ooh, it's Blob. <laughs> it's Blob, not enough. We YOLO'd it and could not. Oh man, the cannonball would have been juicy. Oh, you <laughs> this, this up to the, to the bonus clips. Oh, the YOLO Professor X when I had the cannonball to just obliterate the blob. Sean to obliterate the blob. Oh, that hurts. And then I can only play two cards. So we will just fortify middle and do a blob. Opponent right? And we'll just eat it into this. Uh, they probably have Sean. So that's what I'm about to eat. Yep, there's Sean. That was it. We did not have a higher power card because Blob wins right. Yep. 